Who that family? Check out the Pro Shop. That's right, the Pro Shop is the platform store where you can go and buy all the latest merch to support the platform. Available at the Pro Shops, we have dozens of hundreds of products available for you and your family. Unisex tees for men and women, hoodies and sweatshirts, tank tops, kids and baby items, long sleeve tees, mugs, pillows, wall art, bath bedding, face masks, phone cases, stickers, bags, fanny packs, socks, hats, and many other other items please feel free to check out the pro shops the link is in the description section below and remember it helps the platform continue to grow check out the pro shop and who that too Pelicans, you're now tuned into the Pelican Post Game Report. We are in the building. Much love to the family on this Pelican Post Game Report special edition post trade show coming at the family. Big ups to the flock. Big ups. Big ups to one of some of our newest members of the flock, Paul Cole. Uh, big ups to your family. Welcome. Welcome to the flock. Big ups to you. And in this episode of the Pelican Post Game Report family, Pelicans make a trade. They trade both J.J. Reddit and Nicolo Melli to the Dallas Mavericks for a goon, a crazy man goon by the name of James Johnson. And, of course, a very exciting athletic forward, uh, Wes, um, uh, what's, how you pronounce that name, D.C.? Um, let me see if I can pronounce the young man. A Wundu, Wes A Wundu. And a second round pick. So we'll cover all that today in the show. I'd like to welcome all of you guys to the Pelican Post Game Report. Please strike upon the like button. Please feel free to share the shows in your social media platform on this episode. So I'm Big Q chiming in and we're going to bring in my co-host DC in the place to be. DC, what's going on, fam? How you doing? All right, DC, unmute yourself, sir. There you go. Yo, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What you say? We in the place to be? We in the DC's <laughs> in the place to be. <laughs> Feeling pretty good, man. Just glad the Pelicans was able to pull off something. Something of significance. And uh, I think this was a pretty decent trade bearing the circumstances and that, you know, we was facing buying this guy out potentially paying him money to get going or uh, asking him to take some salary back and putting up a little money just to create a uh, space for Kiara and NAW. But we was able to get some pieces that we might be able to use. So feeling pretty good, man. Uh, Lonzo Ball is still here, so that's good too. Yeah, that's a major part of about it because, of course, the Pelicans were uh, fielding uh, offers for Lonzo. And, uh, of course, the indication was they had to get blown away by the offer to make a move on Lonzo but ultimately deciding to keep them, which is uh, a lot of people is help, ha, ha, really happy about it. Uh, my, I myself didn't really want to trade uh, Lonzo Ball. I'm thinking that by trading Lonzo DC, this pre presents it could be problematic for the chemistry because you already Zion and B.I. both are, you know, Jeff and for him saying, man, we want him here, you know, so and then you would make the move to ultimately right. try to trade him. That could be problematic uh, for them. But anyway, Pelicans – they do deal J.J. Reddit, and we all knew that. Uh, and um, big up Stiley Cosell because he called this on an article where he said that the Pelicans, he had an article, you can go and research it on his archive, where he spoke about, you know, going after 
uh, James Johnson, and we ourselves said James Johnson is the crazy goon man. I don't want to use that kind of throw it off, but but he is a tough guy. That's the dude. I just call him Bloodsport. But That's man, his nickname. Nick, nickname Bloodsport Black Black Belt. You can look at a lot of footage from him. He's up in there, you know, doing the dirty work. I mean, James Jones is a good addition to the team. Now, of course, JJ Reddit, they would have they was going into a buyout market if they couldn't root, uh, get rid of JJ Reddit, and they had a lot of people saying, uh, you know, well, hey, Q, you, you know, uh, you know, what are the Pelicans doing? All this kind of stuff, man. JJ Reddit was headed to the buyout market. What the hell are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? We were, we going he was gonna be going anyway. At least the Pelicans did get a four or a guy there that can actually help them fulfill that bench rotation. And this guy is a guy that can play the four and the five. He ain't the greatest of three-point shooters, but he's the he's the big that we needed off the bench that we've been talking about. Okay, and this one, as you see on stream screen, the Pelicans deal J.J. Reddit to the Mavericks keeping lines of ball. And, of course, you look at the article here, J.J. Reddit, uh, or they are tra- Pelicans trading Reddit and shooting guard, uh, uh, you know, shooting, I mean, trading J.J. Reddit to the Dallas Mavericks, according to the report by, uh, Sham Sharania of the Athletic Trade will put the 36-year-old back in the playoff contender. It is going to the Mavericks, however, but they also packed and shipped Nico Melli, who was struggling. And then, of course, they get James Johnson, Wes Awandu, and a second-round pick back. So, you know, that's it is. And, of course, let's unpack that. And, of course, the Pelicans, the sideballs, Pelicans deciding to hold on to Lonzo Ball. Now, of course, I heard a lot of comments and people were telling me, Q, I don't know if uh, Lonzo is worth $20 million or what he's asking for 18 But remember, like, you know, sometimes you have to quantify this. He's asking for 18 uh, $20 million. The Pelicans could come down maybe to 18 19 Hell, that's what they playing Eric Bledsoe right now. You mean to tell me that he ain't better than Bledsoe? He's not worth $18 million? I mean, come on. So right. that, 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 think about that for well, a second. It, but hold on. It sounds better you get to when that. you say, like, four years, $80 million. That sounds better than saying twenty million dollars. Twenty million, yeah, and, but that's what it really works out to be. That's old car dealer trick they like to throw at you, but uh, but but that's the deal though. You know that's the reality. But let's unpack the trade. Uh, JJ Reddit, Nico Melli, both going to Dallas. James Johnson, Wesson want to do second round pick. Thoughts on that? Man, uh, A plus plus because from what I was told by Woj, who uh, usually is pretty reliable, I see about. 70, 80 percent. He was wrong about a lot of stuff about the Pelicans today. Cause we ain't buy out JJ and Lonzo didn't get moved. So uh you was facing a buyout and you found a way to turn that into a second round pick and two uh solid defensive players and one guy with maybe the capability of possibly being a stretch for, or you know, having some uh some uh other abilities as well. He's a little bit of a the Swiss Army knife, they would call him, off the bench when they when he was going to, to the Mavs. He's a guy that can also be an enforcer and what we call a crazy guy. That's why uh, Q was saying that. Gotta throw it off. Every team. Yeah, but, I mean, every team needs that guy that's not afraid to get in people's face, that's not afraid to ruffle some feathers, that, uh you know, will call people out when things aren't going right. Just, just be willing to state that. So, it was good to have uh, a guy like that in um in James Johnson. So I think overall, man, it's it's a it's a great trade and it's something that could potentially help us actually win some games now in the present. And the guy Wes uh I know, how do you how do you pronounce his name again, a man? <laughs> Wes a uh, one dude. Oh, that's he like uh your boy for Star Wars. Like uh <laughs> what, what what his name was? Windu? Windu? A uh, one dude, okay. So uh, he's a very athletic guy, another good defender, seven foot two wingspan, dude six six. He can play uh, shooting guard, small forward, kind of what we need as as a wing. We need somebody who can play defense and just a, a body that's capable, you know, as a wing. And um, he's a guy with the potential if Vincent can get with him and fix his shot because he can't shoot or nothing right now. Shooting numbers look horrendous. Both of their numbers don't really look great, but they weren't paying major minutes with Dallas. But um, he could possibly be something. I mean, we on the hook with him for like $2 million next year if we bring him back. So, you know, we got something maybe that we could work with and uh, going forward or maybe somebody we can use this year because these two guys are – they're veterans. They've been in the league. I think he's been in the league about five years. So 
he's probably going to get the nod over a guy like Najee Marshall. So Darius Stonewell, uh, he's not able to come back because that will put us in the luxury tax if we brought him back. So it's another guy that, that can take a spot. So maybe we don't see him no more this year. And he takes that spot and kind of gets some burn trash time or who knows, maybe you can move up in the rotation because outside of uh, Kiara, NAW, you got Jackson Hayes. Uh, Billy Billy ain't really getting a lot of minutes unless uh, Adams or Hayes get hurt. You, you got some spots there, man. So uh, Melly's gone. So James Johnson's probably going to get that four spot. And if we go with 10 guys, then – it's very well. It's very likely that Wentz could be that ten guy, man. Uh, and these are two Van Gundy guys. Um, I was talking to Big Q about it, and he reminds me of uh, you said he was garbage though. Stanley Johnson, another guy, a lot of athleticism, defensive capabilities, offensive side of the game, need a lot of work. Uh, Wentz is 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 pretty much a similar mold, man. Almost a similar build and everything. So. I'm sure Stan Van Gundy's excited right now that he's got two defensive guys for guys that he really wasn't trying to play at all. So, yeah, uh, Johnson's James Johnson's uh, six eight two forty uh, strong man game is his game. That's what he does. Uh, and you look at his career statistics in terms of what he's scoring. He's been with everybody. Started off with Chicago for a couple of years, then two years with Toronto, one year with Sacramento, one year with Memphis. Went back to Toronto for two more years. Then went to Miami for th- for four years, one, two, three, four years. Yeah, then Minnesota. Then he's with that da- was with Dallas. Now he with the Pelicans. So he's a definitely a journeyman guy. Been in the league for some time. Thirty four years of age. His uh, career statistics, as it stands, six hundred and sixty three games with two hundred and twenty one starts, averaging for his career uh, twenty point five minutes per contest. He shoots for his career forty seven point six. And just under 31% from downtown. He's a 69% uh, shooter from the free throw line. And he averages eight points, uh, you know, for his career and 3.6 on the rebounds. So there you go for your career. Now with Dallas this past season, he played in 29 matchups. This year, he averaged uh, just under six points a game with three rebounds per contest and 17 minutes of action. His best season of play was actually uh, maybe about several seasons ago, back in 2016 and 2017 with the Miami Heat. He averaged 13 points a game with five rebounds in that time span. He played in 76 games, started five of them, but 27 minutes of action. That's what he did. And just recently, up to two years ago with Minnesota, he averaged 12 points a contest in 14 games uh, as well. So, like I said, what he brings is something that the Pelicans simply don't have right now. And that's a guy that that uh, is uh, a, a a big guy who fights for baskets. He can play in the, the five. If they go small, he can be the small ball center. He fights for rebounds. You have to run plays for him. He dives on the floor. And he's an attitude guy. He brings the attitude. He brings intensity off the bench. Right, he's the guy that you would need off the bench that we were talking about. And another thing, he also he, completely... He, he ain't afraid to fight. That's correct. what I like about him. Correct. He, yeah, it's footage. 20, you, 20 and 0 is a kickboxer. Yeah, that's right. So when Kiara get knocked down, or they foul Zion hard, guess who's going to be walking over there? Yeah, he, gonna, yeah, that, he don't play that. I thought that would have been Steven Adams, but he, he seems like he's a little bit too much of a nice guy. I don't think he's scared of nobody. But uh, we, we need somebody to ruffle some feathers, man. Cause we don't want to get our feathers ruffled, <laughs> so I, <laughs> I think he's a guy that, that that could do that, man. That's the most exciting part of this to me. He brings a, a an intensity to me, a, a little bit of a toughness, depending on you know how well he meshes with everybody and and just uh, takes a liking to him, man. I mean, you 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 gonna get some passion from a guy like this, it's like you know, similar like a Pat Beverly, like the, that energy, man. You know that uh that little pesky annoying like oh man this guy we gotta uh, he, he got a little bit of that man i think that's a, that's a great thing bro. yeah you're right i mean and that's the thing that we were talking about most importantly dc what he does do is he gives the pelicans uh, uh a person that really that he gives the pelicans somebody that really works uh at that final spot off the bench you know when you, you're talking about completing the bench 
and you need that four, that four that can, you know, that can hit that three pointer. Like I said, he's about 31% from shooting the three, you know, but the reality is Nico Melli wasn't doing, you know, so the, the Pelicans got rid of two guys. They weren't going to get, they weren't going to get rid of anyway. And what they do get back for, uh, Johnson is a guy that that really help you off the bench. He fits with what they're doing. He gives you the big guy that can that that does it that does it all, man. And that mean guy, DC mentioned that he's a kickboxer, 18 and 0, 18 and 0. I want to no 20 and 0 as a kickboxer. Uh, he's a black belt. Right. His whole family's black belt. You think a guy like that gonna take some? You know what? Absolutely not. So we get him a second round pick. And the other guy that we got was Wesley Awandu. Who's six foot seven? He was a second, a seventh round draft pick. Yeah, he, uh, he a Jedi. Yeah, you get Windu. you get him. He's a he was a second round pick by the Orlando Magic back in what was that? Uh, what year was that? You know, a couple of years ago. And uh, twenty seventeen. Yeah, twenty. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. And he was uh, twenty a second round pick. Yeah, 2017, 33rd pick overall for the Magic. He moved around a little bit as well. Six seven, six 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 seven. About 195, 200 pounds around that way. They got him listed as a small forward. I've seen footage of him playing as a two. Not a lot to talk about this young man. You know, you go and look at uh, his scouting report uh, coming out of Kansas State, and they talk about him. Uh, his pros is good scorer off the dribble, excel at scoring on the move. Is a, they consider him a playmaker. Fairly good rebound, a good defensive player, solid athlete, does have long arms, and great size to play on the wing. Now, his cons is... He needs to improve his shooting, unselfish to a fault, meaning too much passing. Can be a bit turnover prone. We can work on that. Can play too wildly on offense at times. Does not connect enough steals, collect enough steals, and at times does commit bad penalties. But the reality is the summary on him is he's an athletic swing man that excels at taking the ball to the hoop and garner scores. Plus, he's a good facilitator that plays like a season point forward. And he also is an adequate defender. He will need to improve his jump shot. But pesky, pesky defender, that's what they yeah, call him. That's his game. His, his, his game is that he is he takes pride in the defensive aspect of his game. But it's shown that he can knock down them at knock down shots at times when he stays focused. He's highly energetic player that could potentially be a reliable two-way player in the NBA someday as he's had strong season this year, could solidify a spot to be picked in upcoming draft. Now, that was the pre-draft NBA scouting report on Wesley Awandu. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and of course, you look at his statistics, D.C., uh, for his career since he's been in the league for 2017. And it's not much to talk about because he hadn't had that much opportunity to kind of make an impression. Now, he did spend three years with Orlando. And then, of course, last year uh, with Dallas, he's played in 205 games, started 49 of them, averaged 17 minutes of contest. Now, his career statistics, uh, statistics is he's 4.5 points per contest uh, for Wandu, and he shoots about 80% from the charity stripe, he shoots 30% from downtown, and he's a 41.2% field goal shooter. So with that being said, a lot of that, but we'll see what Wes, Wesley Wanda is. He's stretches well. He shot 42% from uh from three last year. I was looking into a uh, thing from January 1st. He went on a little runway. He shot 42% from three. So, I mean, he has some – he got some upside, man. We don't, we don't have – they're not bums, so you know these these are guys that can that can bring something to that bench. And uh, for a while this season, we had one of the worst benches in the league, and our young guys started getting it together. And now you add two guys like this that can give you some production, man. This really, to me, uh, helps the Pelicans a lot going on a, a potential playoff push. I mean, I understand all the trades happened, and we all looking at everything happened. Aaron Gordon then went to Denver. Ronzo then went to the Clippers. You know, uh, you got uh, Powell that went to the Blazers. We already had headaches with the Blazers, and you add him. Um, but still, man, uh, I think this team has a lot of growing to do. And this guy, Wes, can be one of those guys that come in and give guys headaches for us on the defensive end. So we need a guy like that, and I'm pretty sure Stan Van Gundy's been dying for a guy like that. And we potentially got two, man, so – it's going to be real interesting to see, man. I'm kind of excited uh, to see these guys get a chance to play. And um, also what we're going to do with Eric Bledsoe, too. This, that's what I was hoping. We probably could have been able to move. I was hearing some stuff about the Knicks and attaching the first-round pick to move him and all of that. But he's still here. Lonzo here, too. 
But it'd be real interesting to see how these lineups are going to go now with uh, Melly out of that rotation. And Stan Van Gundy's been having a pretty uh, set nine-man rotation. So um, Lonzo's still hurt. I don't know how long that's going to go. He was in practice today and uh, tried to give it a go. Stan Van Gundy said he pulled his own self out when they did defensive drills, which was a little more straining for him. So tomorrow he might not play again. But uh, what's what's the time frame, Q, once we trade guys when they're available to it take, come with the team and be well, able to play with we, all this COVID stuff? And right. That? It, it's it's, it's going to be it, – I, I said it probably won't be for the Denver matchup, of course, tomorrow. It'll probably it more than likely it'll more than likely be the second. No, I was game. thinking more of the Dallas match. Yep, yep. Dallas is sun, uh, Saturday. Right. That that should be about right. It take a little while for them to do everything, get everything into place, but it won't be instantaneous. Like they'll be ready for the upcoming Denver game. So, uh, which is tomorrow. So it'll no. be interesting to see exactly how it all shakes. But like I said, it's an attempt to fulfill uh, the bench, and this is what they got. And of course, for people that say, "Well, Q, you know they ain't get value for JJ Reddit." Listen to me. J.J. Reddit was headed for the buyout market. The Pelicans got something for him. They got a, they got a four that can a four who can play the five that can work off the bench. That's the position that you needed off the bench. You needed a big that can play the four or five. And this does make this does make the lineup look a little different if you think about it, because it does this not that doesn't push Jackson Hayes off his spot. This guy could play next to Jackson Hayes. He could play next to Jackson Hayes, Josh Hart, and it does make your your bench rotation look a lot a lot more complete. Cause that's the last thing you were missing was a guy with this with an attitude like this. And like I said, he ain't lighting the fire the world on fire with shooting thirty to thirty one percent from downtown. But neither, neither was Nico Melli. So I mean, you know, you wasn't gonna get much for a JJ Reddy. He was headed for a buyout, and Nico Melli was stinking up the place. So you got rid of both of those guys. Uh, and you got something including a second round pick and a prospect in Wesley Owandu, which will be interesting to see what they do with him as well. Athletic wing like that that can do some stuff high energetic as defense is a staple point. We'll see how that all shakes. But the Pelicans, in my opinion, they did they ain't do blockbuster stuff. And we're gonna go over a few of the trades that happen uh as well in the NBA. We're gonna go over the rest of the trades that happen. We'll give you our thoughts on that in this edition of the show as well. So DC, before we go away from that, my friend, you wanna add anything to that? Now nah, we, we we go ahead and move on, man. Because I mean, I don't want to get too hyped about these guys on on the bench, but uh, it is it is fulfilling, brother, to under to to see us plugging some holes and actually doing some things that's beneficial to the overall roster. I mean, you know, we can't expect either one of these guys to be a starter, even if you go down with an injury. You know, one of these guys probably wouldn't be a starter. Uh, but it's still nice to have some guys on the back end of that rotation to where we can actually go deeper, you know, with the bench. And um, Stan Van Gundy doesn't have to try to hide guys or not play them. I mean, their vets, uh, the defensive system should be pretty, you know, easy for them to understand and, and kind of get into it and mesh well after some games or so. So. It's going to be very interesting to see how this benefits us long term. But for me, this is more like moves that will impact the team. Probably, I, I say, on the, the the last 15 to 10 games of the season, uh, when we make it to the playing tournament, stuff like that, that's when you'll see the real impact of, of these two uh, additions. Yeah, and, and like I said, it, it's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about getting that four, that, that brute, that goon. This is what this guy right. is off the bench, and he has an right. extensive amount of playoff experience, extensive amount of regular season appearance, over 700 games. Stan Van Gundy is not going to just sit him on the bench. This is a guy that he knows that he can get out there and play. He's a, a, a veteran that been through it all. He don't play no games. He ain't going to let you push him down and punk him. He ain't, he ain't playing that. You can go look up his highlights, a lot of the fight scenes. J uh, 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 Johnson's in there. James Johnson is in the scrums. You know, because he ain't right. playing that stuff. And I think that's the type of dude we really needed. We needed that heart. And he also would kind of get on some of these guys here. And, it, you know, when it's time when they messing around, he, and he'll he be one of these energetic guys diving on the floor, doing what he got to do to inspire and keep the team going. So I really do like the trade. Baron, being that the fact that J.J. Reddick, we wasn't going to get nothing from him because he was heading hot headed for the bio market. And we ultimately got Nico Melli off, who was – who had totally lost his confidence shooting the three-pointer. My only thing is I would like to have seen the Pelicans got rid of uh, 
you know, uh, Bledsoe, you know, but they didn't, they, you know, for whatever reason, you know, we decided not to move him. But that was the thing that I wanted to do. I wanted them to get him out of here so we can open up time so we can see KLJ and, uh, and him to get that position. But the Pelicans didn't make that move. OK, let's move on to the NBA trades that happened today as well. One of the biggest ones was, of course, Victor Oladipo averaging just under 21 points per contest. Uh, he he's headed toward the Miami Heat. And I think the Miami Heat did a fantastic job, this trade scenario here, of getting old, uh, Victor Oladipo over there uh, to their team. And Houston knew that they had to get rid of Oladipo and, you know, and get something in return for him. But they packed and shipped him out for Kelly Olenek and, and Avery Bradley in the first round pick swaps. So, I mean, it really, they, you know, they knew they had to get Victor Oladipo out of there and they had to get something for him and that was the best they can do. But Miami's turned that into getting Victor Oladipo, who ultimately I believe will stay there in Miami. That's a perfect system for him. And then also looking at the buyout market, which is next to Land Aldrich with the road on the street is saying once he gets the buyout done, an agreement done with the Spurs, he's headed to Miami. So the Miami Heat have really, really kind of leapfrogged and put themselves in a the supreme position right after the trade deadline. DC, thoughts on that move, man? Big, big move, big man. Move. Uh, Pat, Pat Riley doing Pat Riley things, man. Uh, the Heat, uh, man, they, they so savvy in how they get guys, man. Matter of fact, the act was, I don't even remember how they got Jimmy Butler. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they kind of sneak up on you with a lot of stuff. Uh I don't remember the deal for, for Gordon Dragic, like what they had to give up when they got him over there. They're always finding a way to finagle these guys in, man. And, you know, you look up and you don't think much of the heat and bam, they're in the finals, <laughs> in the playoffs every year. It's like, how the hell they keep doing that? Like what they got going on over there? Top-notch organization, man. Uh, I'm, I'm glad they're not in the West. One less team we ain't got to deal with, but – uh. Man, they sure is trying to boo-boo on uh, Philadelphia in, in the Knicks parade, i tell you that. They get LaMarcus Aldridge, and you put him with Victor D- Oladipo, with Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero, and Bam out of Bayou, and the rest of those guys, they got pressure to chew off the bench. The Heat are starting to form up a, a nice little team, man. They got uh, Bensa, uh, what, what's that little stretch four guy from Sacramento, too? They basically pulled the trade to get him, get him more Harkless or something. Trevor Ariza. Um, and Trevor Ariza? Yeah, they got Ariza, oh, too. They got Trevor Ariza? I think they did get Trevor Ariza. They, and, and they got uh, Andre Iguodala, yep. you know, the guy that still has a lot of talent some quality there. minutes he can give you. You know what I'm saying? He ain't going to be able to give them to you for 20, 30 minutes, but Iggy, Iggy will give you a hard 15 minutes, you know what I'm saying? If you place that right, that'll be very impactful in the game. Um, the Heat are, are a very intelligent organization, man, and they – they top notch. I like what they do over there, and that's very smart to, to take a chance uh, at Victor Oladipo for basically nothing. And he's a guy that says he wants to test free agency, but you watch, he's probably gonna wind up signing right back with the Miami Heat. You know, it's, it's it's just a smart move, and most guys that go over there they love it. I mean, who don't want? Who wouldn't want to be in Miami every day? And then you got an organization that's all about winning, and they're willing to do everything and push you to the brink to be able to do it. You know, so shouts out to them, man. I'm just glad we ain't got to worry about playing them in the playoffs unless we in the championship game. Yeah, very talented team, man, still making great moves. Other moves, uh, uh, nine moves, of course, was Raptors decided not to trade Lau where he stayed put where he was at. Uh, and, of course, we know about the Pelicans not trading ball. We covered that. Celtics did make a trade. Uh, they trade Theus. Uh, to the Bulls as well as the Bulls of you know doing some stuff and he and Theus is a guy Theus is a guy the Celtic center who's averaged nine point five points per game five point two rebounds and he goes there and swap for Mo Wagner they trade him for, for uh but they traded him for Mo Wagner uh but yeah that uh, he went to the Bulls man the Bulls they 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 did some sneaky stuff didn't they they got Vujicic and they got Theus. Yep, they they made some moves, man, and, wow. and we're gonna go over that too. Warriors reportedly trade Wanamaker. Uh, Golden State reportedly made a pair of trades, sending Brad Wanamaker to the Hornets and for and forward Marquise Chris to the Spurs. That's another one that happened today. 
uh, as we cover, as you can see here, the Heat getting Ola Depot from the Rockets. We, we told we showed you that for Avery Bradley, Kelly Olenek, and 2022 pick swap. We covered that as well. And, of course, reported the Raptors deal Davis. Toronto Raptors have sent reserve guard Terrence Davis to the Sacramento Kings for future second round for a future second round pick. Davis averaging just seven points a contest as well. And, of course, the Clippers traded Williams, right? Sweet Lou Williams to the Hawks for Rajon Rondo. Another interesting move is he had back to Atlanta. And that was a big move right there because Rondo heads back to Los Angeles. And this time in a in a Clippers uniform with with uh you know with Leonard and Paul George and as long as he stays healthy, Rajon Rondo is gonna be a player for them over there. And Lou Williams heads to be a backup there with Trey Young in Atlanta, who's just tearing it up in the Eastern Conference uh as well. DC, you want to comment on that one? Yeah, man, uh that's a championship move by the Clippers, man. That to me, um, I know people might disagree or still holding fate. With LA, I, I think that, you know, me being realistic, I would love for the Pels to get there, but I don't think we're going to make it to the finals. But I think that move realistically puts the Clippers in the finals, if, if I'm being honest, man. Uh, that's the one thing they was missing. And a guy like Rondo, when you really understand the game and, and what he brings to the game, like, he is that player that, that'll put a good team over the top. He he's gonna know everything that the opposing team's doing. He knows their sets, knows the sets that you're supposed to do in and out. He's gonna tell Kawhi and PG where to be, get over here and get them easy buckets. That's what them guys need. So they ain't gotta work so hard to get them 20 and 30 point games, man. PG and Kawhi get 30, 40 points in their sleep playing with a guy like Rondo, setting them up. Yep. You know, and, and then in the playoffs, he kind of conserves his energy during the regular season because, you know, he's older and he know he got to pace himself. In the playoffs, he just turns it up and goes to another level. Playoff Rondo is for real. He it is, is a real, real thing. Yep. We've witnessed it here it, in New a Orleans. Pelican, I've seen watched it. what Rondo did in New Orleans, man, yep. and, and, and admired it. And I was begging for us to get him before we got him, and we got him, and we went to the playoffs and, and, and blew Portland out, man. Swap him with Dane. Shut him down. You know, and a lot of that was Drew Holiday as well. But Rondo was the guy that was orchestrating all of that. Yep. And if it wouldn't have been for a team like the Warriors, we laughing and, you know, talk about the Pels and their mishaps. The Pels could have very likely made it to the finals that year. They were playing that good. They ran into the Warriors, though. I mean, with Durant. Like, what you going to do? What are you really going to do? So... Rondo is a game changer, and the whole Clippers Lakers thing it, to me is it's gonna blow up in the Lakers face. Like I don't, I didn't understand at the end of their championship season, and they say Rondo won like nine million dollars for the contribution that he gave them in the bubble and what he did. Rondo was a key part of them winning that damn championship and dominating the Heat the way they did. Not saying AD and LeBron didn't do a lot of the heavy lifting, but Rondo was. Very instrumental in in them pulling that out, and for them to not re-sign him, I, I thought it was crazy. Like, why why the hell wouldn't so when LeBron isn't the point guard or facilitating? Like, who y'all gonna have do that? They went and got Dennis Schroeder, and we all know Dennis Schroeder is not really he's more of a scoring point guard, not a facilitating point guard. Like, yeah, he gets you some buckets off the bench, but he's not about to be setting people up like that. Not like Rondo, so. Shouts out to the Clippers, man. Big, big move for them. And uh, Lou Williams going to Atlanta in a, in a backdrop. I know you like that move, Q. Um, I think it's a good move for 12 them. 12 points on the bench. It gives you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good move for them. And Atlanta's playing really good. And Atlanta loves Lou. You know, that's his hometown. He's yep. from there. And he get to get all them wings. <laughs> Everybody talk about him going to Magic City. You get all the Magic City wings he on now. And, uh, but, but Lou is a a very, very good player when he could just go out there and, and be Lou. You know, he could be that guy that take them shots and uh, and get buckets, you know. I think with the Clippers, he was a lot more effective before Kawhi and PG got there. And I still think he got something left in the tank, and we're we going to get to see some more flashes of Lou. And he's definitely going to help Atlanta turn it up a notch. 
Um, they one of the teams that's coming up on our schedule that we haven't. I don't think we played Atlanta at all this year, and we're we gonna see them. And I ain't really looking forward to it. Not you know, I think we can beat Atlanta, but Atlanta is, is that's gonna be a tough out, man. Uh, Atlanta's got a lot of talent, man. They are loaded with guys all over the court that can score the ball. Uh, the one thing you can hang their hat on that they're not the best defensive team on a perimeter. They do have a uh, Clint Capella in the post, you know, being man in the block. But other than that, you, you kind of score on them. But man, you're not about to stop them from scoring. Didn't that, I think Atlanta had they scored 160 points in the game or something this year? Or was that the Nets? I know they were they weren't too far behind uh the Nets or one of them, man. Atlanta had a game where they put up some ridiculous points, man. You know, um, and then that's that's the team. If they got it clicking, they, they could be just about anybody. All right, that's true. Let, let's keep it running up. Oh, we'll keep it running. We're going to run through the rest of these trades, and we're not going to hold you too long, family. Jazz reportedly trade the Raptors, uh, trade for Raptors Thomas, as we told you. Uh, you know, I mean, well, you we mentioned it. Uh, Kyle Lowry didn't get trade, but ultimately Matt Thomas did. Got traded to Utah for a pick. As you can see, that move opened up some things for them. Thomas is a 45.7% three-point shooter. And long-range action, sure, it would be welcome in the Jazz. They have a mix of three-point bar- uh, shooters, and Thomas adds to that mix. The Heat Lakers, Clippers, and they, you know, they talked about them being in the mix for the Blazers. Acquire Raptors power, which was a big move, as they sent Gary Trent Jr. and Rodney Hood to the Toronto Raptors for Norman Powell as the Blazers are looking to kind of up their game in the West as well. Sixers get healed in a three-team deal. Now, with Sixers staying to chase the land guard Lauer, he wasn't, they, they turned him loose. So the Sixers have a new guard in the backcourt as OK Stumdy reportedly agreed to trade George Hill. In multiple reports, the three-team encompasses the Sixers, the Knicks, and Oklahoma City. The Thunder gets, according to Adrian Wojnowski, the 76ers get healed. Uh, George Hill, the Knicks forward Ignis Brazadikas or whatever. The Knicks get 76 swingman Terrence Ferguson and Thunders get the Knicks guard Austin Rivers. 76ers center Tom Bradley and second and uh, second round picks in the 2025 and 2025 uh, draft from Philadelphia. So that's a move there. As you see, the uh, Sixers and make moves. He did, I mean, the uh, Sixers and the uh, Knicks trying to do something. He also got another player. The Heat were very active. The Miami reportedly added another versatile player to its front line, reportedly finalizing a trade with Sacramento to acquire Nemnaja Belajenka, who's a stretch four, who a uh, shooter for Sacramento, had a big contract. He's a stretch four. Ultimately, he's, he's going to replace Olenek to a degree. And he will head to the Heat, and the Heat give up Mo Harkless and forward Chris Silva to land him. So he just got it going at the deadline there. And probably one of the biggest moves was the Nuggets agreeing to Dale Gordon. Aaron Gordon has been on the trade block and and uh, Celtics were among a few teams getting them. But Denver, well, ultimately the team ended up getting Aaron Gordon in a trade uh, for Gary Clark, sending him there, Gary Harris. Uh, Aaron Gordon and Gary Clark to Denver for guards, Gary Harris and R.J. Hampton. Remember him? That's the guy the Pelicans drafted for them. And a 2025 first round draft pick. So Gordon is a deal there. Bulls get Wagner for uh for Browns from the Wizards as well. We talked, we, you know, to mention that. Washington's trading Troy Brown and Mo Wagner to Chicago for Daniel Gifford and Chandler Hutchinson. So man, Chicago, Miami, those guys are for real. Celtics also yeah. land Evan Fournier in a report That's getting him a shooter. They getting him there for next to nothing as the Celtics traded Fournier to the Celtics for basically uh two second round picks. You know, really nothing there. Celtics making a good move there. Orlando just gave up on everything, huh? They they, just, they, they wiping the, all the way out. Wiping huh? the slate clean. And they also traded right. Vujasev to the Bulls. And this probably was the biggest move of the day because the Bulls acquired uh, All-Star and Vujasev there. In, in the, v- Vujasev, my brother. I, I do know how to say it. Vujasev. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. And, of course, there it is. He gets some. And what did they give up to get him? Uh, Ford's El Farouk Amino is there, and Wendell Carter Jr. is sent to sent back in Orlando with Otto Porter and two first round picks. Also, the Cavs sent JaVel McGee to the Nuggets, as well as he goes there with Denver. Is Denver getting Gordon and uh, uh, the and JaVel provide a little backcourt role there behind the center position behind uh, the Joker? 
And as you can see, so a lot of moves in, and of course the trade, a lot of the trade, the buyouts with Andre Drummond and, and, and of course the, the Mark, LaMarcus Aldridge uh, situation has already happened where they already have bought LaMarcus out. So he's supposed to be headed to Miami. Drummond is another candidate for the bio market as well. So out of, you know, DC, which one of and these he's trades? supposed in? to be headed to the nuts. I mean, the Nets. Talking about the nuts. <laughs> They're going to drop their nuts if they get him. But uh, Drummond is supposed to be headed to the Nets. All right. But, so, uh, out of all of these, which one uh, uh, tickle your fancy? Uh, I think the smartest trade, the, the one I was like, why the hell the Pelicans didn't do that, was the the Voyagers trade with the Bulls, man. Uh, looking at what they gave up for him, I wasn't – blown away i thought it would probably take more than that to give Vujicic a guy who's on a, a really good contract for the production that he's giving you i mean he's on he's, he's on a 110 million dollar contract i think for like four years or something and he's giving you all-star level production and you give up two draft picks and a guy that's severely overpaid at 28 million in auto porter and uh window carter jr i think will hurt a little bit that he's a good player um, I think he'll be a lot better with Orlando than he's been with Chicago. Kind of needed something different, but that guy got a lot of talent. Uh, I remember him coming in as a rookie before he got hurt. He he had, I think he was averaging maybe like 17 points a game, like that's 10 been, rebounds. But that's been the issue with Wendell, with Wendell Carter Jr. They got tired of that, him getting hurt. And of course, keep getting hurt. He, he keeps getting hurt. And of course, you have, they still have Larry Market in there, but. The Bulls have done a, a, a damn good job, man, in picking up talent to work along with Zach Levine and Kobe White and rest with them got what they got going on in Chicago. Right, right. I, I I thought that was that was the move, done, man. But uh, uh, Miami Heat would be the next one, and and uh, man, it's uh, you know what, Miami Heat and in Denver, they're the two teams that got way better. I'm gonna tie them as the next best moves. Vujicic just was a great deal. But I don't see the Bulls really making no noise just because they got Vujicic. I mean, they, they still ain't going to play a lick of defense. But um, Denver, man, in Miami, my uh, Denver being able to get JaVale McGee yeah, backing and up the Joker. Aaron Gordon. And so Gordon. so yeah. you, you get a guy that could give you 15, 16 points a night, possibly hit some threes, and pretty much guard three through five or two through five, depending on how you want to look at Aaron Gordon. Right. And then the, the one area where the Joker has any type of flaw, you get a guy that late in games, you probably could roll out and enter the game lineup, put JaVale McGee out there to yeah. to, to shut down the paint. Because, you know, that's that's where the Joker weak at on defense. And and, he, and you got Aaron Gordon out there too. And they still got uh, Michael Porter Jr., Jamal Murray, Will Borden, uh, Morris, who else I'm missing? Q. They they still got a uh, oh, what's man. what's that uh that Mar power forward man? He's getting older. Uh, still good. Millsap. He, he's he's just older now. Paul, Millsap. Millsap still got Millsap. Yep. Man, I mean they still got Bo Bo if they want to do something. With him. The Denver is just loaded. Their team loaded with talent. They're so good that the two guys they gave away could potentially be starter quality players. Gary Harris obviously ain't living up to his contract, but when he's playing at the level that he's capable of playing with, he's a starter. He's a starter level player. You know, um, or uh, what's what's the guy that we drafted for them? RJ Hampton. He was man. This dude was supposed to be a lottery pick. I don't know what happened and how he fell so far. But the year before, they were projecting him to go before Lamelo Ball. That's the type of talent he got. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and that guy wasn't getting no playing time in Denver. Just, just how, how talented they are, you know. So, that's that's a scary ass team. I'm just glad these uh these trades don't fall through <laughs> tomorrow, so we get to play them without these guys. But man, facing them again the next time around with Javale McGee and Aaron Gordon would be a completely different team. And it, uh, man, that'd be a tough one. You know, we were short handed too with our lines with ball, so. Obviously, that would help us tremendously. But man, it, the Denver, Denver is a tough out, man. Uh, and the losers in all this is the damn LA Lakers. I don't care if AD and LeBron them come back in the next three weeks or so, four weeks. 
with the moves that have been pulled off, man, they they're gonna be dropping. And they, I think it does matter the positioning of where you're gonna be in the playoffs because fans are gonna be back. It's looking like the playoffs are gonna have people, you know, in the stadium. So a That's home a field advantage is gonna matter. Right. That's a plus. Right. So the the Lakers uh what you say? Say that's a plus. I could having people oh, in the building. Oh yeah, man! I mean that that's gonna make basketball way better, man. It's way more exciting with people in the building. Even watching it on TV, you can feel that energy. But um, the 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 Lakers uh, I don't I don't see them being able to make it to the finals this year with all of these moves and the turmoil they're going through. We're gonna see a new champ this year, y'all. So. It's exciting, and hopefully it could be the Pels. I know I didn't give us a lot of fate talking about the Clippers, but we still got a chance. You know, um, we would have to go through a lot of steps and do a lot of growing and uh, grow at a rapid rate as well. But the Pels have a shot because the defending champs is, is is out of this. Yeah, those injuries, you know, they're really catching it, man. And uh, but that's a good thing for the for the Pelicans, man. Is we did improve. We do have. Draft pick though. Yep. <laughs> we, it definitely helps us in major ways, man. Moving forward, to be honest with you, to see them, the, the to see them hurt, man. It doesn't. I'm not don't feel bad for them at all. But anyway, moving ahead, man. <laughs> a lot of teams got better during the, the trade just deadline, man. On them, though, right? Well, I mean, it is what it is. It wouldn't feel bad for us, so you know, the hell with it. But of course, co- coming up <laughs> next, Denver. We have Denver a uh, Friday uh, at 8 p.m. and of course. We're going to be uh, covering that Pelican post game report. We'll be recapping that game after the game. And of course, Pelicans Lonzo ball questionable for Friday. According to Roto Wires, putting up there his ball hip is questionable for Friday's game against the Nuggets. Uh, he was unable to finish Thursday practice after apparently aggravating his strained re- right hip flexor. However, he still carried the same injury designation. I've had a Friday's matchup if ball is held out for a third straight game. NAW. Should increase and see his run for the Pelicans get it get more minutes there as well. So a bit of news there as Man, well. Eric Bledsoe is got to be the luckiest guy in the NBA, bro. <laughs> Cause this almost this this but guarantees his minutes still. <laughs> Cause if Lonzo Ball comes back in the way NAW and Kiara's playing, I mean there was a possibility that Eric Bledsoe could have been moving to the bench, especially after you heard Van Gundy come out and basically. He ain't sugarcoat nothing in that press conference the other day when they asked him about Eric Blessel and his struggles. <laughs> you know, so uh, the reigning two-time man, MVP to be dodging another bullet. Wednesday's but game Lonzo, uh, Lonzo being hurt, I think it will actually be a good thing in the long run for us who want Eric to go to the bench. Because if you have uh, NAW, you have another game of twenty-something points. You know, he plays pretty solid. Let's say Kiara hits around his career high, or he exceeds that again. I mean, how much you you see from these young guys before you decide, okay, maybe I should give them more minutes and take minutes away from this guy who's giving me, you know, two and four points, even though he's giving me good defense. Not going to completely shut him out, but definitely going to reduce the minutes, I would think. Yeah, we're going to see, man. It's most interesting. I won't see once we get all our pieces and ducks in a row. We got to make a run at this thing. Bottom line, I've said it all season long, the Pelicans are a playoff team. Uh, we finally make some moves on the trade uh, at the trade deadline. We don't move Alonzo. That's a plus in my opinion. Uh, we do get J.J. Reddy, who's headed out for the buyout market. Nico Melli, who was struggling shooting the shot. I wish we would have got rid of Eric Bledsoe, but, you know, we didn't move him. But Johnson will bring a per- – he will be a guy that will bring that aggression. He will bring that, that, that toughness that we've been calling for at the four position also he can help out. Uh, when they go small, he can play the small ball uh, center for you as well. So there's some applications there with Johnson. They can't hit the tree, can't hit it at a high clip. He's shooting 30, 31 percent from down uh, from the three point line currently. But that doesn't mean that he can't pick up those numbers a tad bit. So with that right. being with that being said, I'd like to give a shout out to the flock. Big ups to you guys. Thank you all for joining us for the special trade deadline show. What's up, flockers? Big ups to uh, our new subscriber there. Alice there, neighbors, big ups to you, Alice there. Welcome to the flock. Much love to you, Mr. Neighbors. Big ups to your family. Thank you for joining the flock as well. And once again, family, please feel free to hit upon a like button. 
Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to The Realest Show, talking about the New Orleans Pelicans. We keep it real here on this show here. Big ups to you. Share the show links in your social media feeds, no matter where they are, and help build a platform. So, DC, with that being said, I'm going to leave you the flow uh, to, to drop it the, the, the show's favorite line. <laughs> I'm dropping it because it be what, Big Q? Popping. <laughs> We got to get this. Uh, What's up? When anybody roll up on you and go to hating on the Pelicans, you tell them to get the flock out of here. And? Go flock yourselves. In that order. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fam. Thank y'all for ch- chiming in. Big ups to y'all. We'll see y'all on the Peace Friday out. show. Who that to you, DC? Another fantastic show. I'll right, talk to you later, tomorrow. fam. All right, brothers.